Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the summary or situation report or the SIBREP for the day of 803 for the 6th of May. We're going to start off with frontline changes report. Uh, there is three. We have Berestovic, Kalinina as well as Novo Parovsky. Then after that, we're going to the strategic and tactical reporting. So first thing first is Berestovic. So according to the latest geolocation, uh, there is... Um, Russian forces geolocated basically uh, at this uh, tree line around here. And uh, this tree line, uh, because this position is so close to the uh, to this uh, alleged front line by the Ukrainian mapping, uh, we have to invalidate parts of this uh, front line to because uh, the Russians are just too close to this location. So the U Ukrainian mapping is going to change to look something like this. Uh, so there's just some slight frontline change based on uh, on the Ukrainian side of the mapping. So the next frontline change, uh, so this one is at Berestove. Uh, Berestove is over here, Kromalny is here. And uh, this uh, Kuzimivka, Novoselivsky. So uh, the next frontline change is over at Kalinina. Uh, Kalinina, Kalinina is at the Bakhmut front. And uh, basically, this is just off Bodanivka. And uh, new geolocations locations have been revealed that the Ukrainian forces actually still have control of these trenches around here. So this actually is either uh, the Russian claim is uh, invalidated, is wrong, or that the Ukrainian forces have actually counter-attack and captured these trench lines. So, uh, so which means that the Russians still have control over Berdanivka, but uh, the, the zone of control is actually a lot lesser than it was uh, previously uh, understood to be. So, so this is the front line change around here uh, over at Kalanina at the Bakhmut front. So uh, this is Novi, Kalinina, then Abakmut City. So the next frontline change is over at Novoporovsky, over at the Adyevka front. So uh, this is Adyevka City, and uh, Novoporovsky is over here. It's on the uh, west of Bedaichi, and uh, Russian forces continue the attack over at Novoporovsky, and, uh, which is over here, and the Russian forces are expanding control uh, in this area here. Uh, near be between Bedaichi and Novoporovsky, the Russian forces are expanding their control. It looks like the Ukrainian forces did not leave, uh, did not bolt from this region here. They continue to hold uh, a strong line around this area here uh, from Semenivka, Bedaichi and Novoporovsky. So the advance from the Russians is actually very slow. So that's all from the frontline changes report. Uh, we go on to the uh, Kherson front for the strategy and tactical reporting. Uh, over here, there is only fighting being reported at Krinky, but this time round, there is corroboration from Raiba, the pro-Russian source, reporting that uh, the Ukrainians continue to hold position at Krinky. So very impressive that uh, this Krinky continues to be uh, being fought over after so long, uh, despite the strategic in in uh, significance of this uh, location. We move into the Zaporizhia front. Also over at the Zaporizhia front, uh, this is Zaporizhia city. Uh, there is only fighting being reported uh, over at Robotine. So Russian forces continue to be attacking in this area here. Uh, we, uh, this reported by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry and Raiba, but uh, that's about it. So uh, you may also notice late as we go along, uh, there is very few reports uh, over the past uh, 24 hours because yesterday's SIBREP already covered the Russian Defense Ministry's yesterday's report, as well as uh, there is uh, lesser reports or like lesser detailed reports coming from the Russian sources. So uh, which means that uh, there's a high chance that because they are, they are celebrating the uh, the Orthodox, Orthodox uh, Easter, so which is why no a lot of people is not working. So there's actually less reports uh, to talk about. So, and maybe the front line just got more quiet as well. Fighting is reported at Novo uh, Staromayoske and Uruzaini at the Donetsk front. They are also fighting reported towards Vodian, Konstantinivka, Paraskovievka, as well as Konstantinivka. So this is the strategic situation around this front line. Uh, pretty much normal stuff. Uh, there's nothing uh, particularly special about all of this information. So we'll move on from this area. We move into the ADFK front. So over at the ADFK front, uh, there is fighting reported uh, in these areas here. I think I have to break into half. So in the southern half, we have fighting reported at Nevelske, uh, Netalove, Yasnoprotivka, as well as Umanske. So the Russians are continuing their offensive. Uh, but that's about it. I pre uh, yesterday I predicted that the Ukrainians will withdraw from Povomaiske, but uh, 
there is just not enough uh, information today to to judge anything so we will continue to monitor uh, over the northern half uh, as I mentioned, uh, there is fighting reported from Badaichi region uh, towards Novo Porovsky. There is fighting reported towards Sotkiu, as well as Novo Oleksandrivka. Uh, there is your location of Russian forces off Solovyove, confirming Russian presence. Uh, and uh, that corroborates the front line. And that's about it, actually, from the ADFK front. We have no updates regarding this uh, northern side where about Akanhelsky, Karaming, Novo Kalinove, no Kalinove. The, there's just no information about all this. So I wonder if it's Easter or is it because the Ukrainian defense has proved to be too effective right now uh, that they managed to reorganize and the Russians are unable to push through. So we will continue to monitor uh, the situation over at this uh, ADFK front. Uh, uh, there is also a... Uh, just another joint location of uh, counter -art counter artillery action, uh, but it's not very important. We moved into the New York front. At the New York front, there is just joint location uh, reports uh, of Russian airstrike, uh, guided uh, guided bomb strikes on uh, Ukrainian positions over at Oleksandropil as well as the southern part of New York. But that's about it. Uh, nothing else over in this front line. We move into the Bakhmut front. In the southern flank of the Bakhmut front, Russian forces attack. Uh, in the area of Klishevka and Andriyevka, and that's about it. In the northern flank, uh, we have fighting reported at Novi. Uh, multiple joint location of FPV drone attacks uh, in the area of Novi and Chastifia by the Russian forces. And uh, of course, we, as we mentioned earlier, uh, Ukrainian forces joint located uh, in, the, in these trenches uh, just off Bodanivka, confirming that the Ukrainians have taken control or retained control over in this area here in the western part of Bodanivka. So this is the few changes, a uh, few reports over this area here. We move on away from the Bakhmut front into the Sivas front. At the Sivas front, uh, we still have pretty much the same thing of as per yesterday. Russian forces attack at Bilohorivka, Vakan Okanyamske towards Vimka as well as Rosdolivka. And that's about it from the Sivas front. There's no uh, particularly anything special about this front line. Uh, over the Kremlin front, we only have reports of fighting at Terni, Yampolivka, and within the Serebansky Forest Tree. So that's about it. Uh, we move into the Sivas front. At the Sivas, uh, sorry, Svetove front. At the Svetove front, we only have fighting reporter at Stemakivka. And uh, that's about it from this area. And uh, moving into the Kupians front, uh, at the Kupians front, uh, there is uh, several fighting. This Kupian city fighting reported at Sinkivka and over at uh, Tours Peshani as well as Berestovi. So, uh, so over at the Berestovi region, we have the Joe location as per mentioned uh, earlier in the frontline changes report showing Rus Russians at least uh, having more presence than the Ukrainian mapping suggested. So, Russian forces pushing towards Peshani as well as towards Berestovi. Uh, over at the uh, Koterivka and uh, Kaislivka region, uh, there is Joe locations being of the Russian raising their flags in the in the two towns. Uh, so, so this these two uh, definitely uh, is a, is an indication and confirmation of the Russian capture of these two towns, uh, which is now reported by Ryber. Uh, and uh, over at the Sinkivka, there's no other news. It's just a Russian attack. And that's about it from the Kupians front. We move into the border region. There is a uh, two Joe location, this wrong color. So Russian forces uh, uh launch airstrike over as Lobozansky of uh in some Ukrainian position, as well as uh there is some there's a lancet strike on the Ukrainian artillery over as Osnivka. So with these two uh strikes. One airstrike, one lancet strike. That's about it from the Kharkiv front. And there's no other reports over at the other front, other lake location. So this is the uh, sit wrap or the summary or the situation report for the day of 803 for the 6th of May. Very short report because a lot of the information has been reported yesterday. And uh, maybe it's the Easter as well. So thank you for watching. Do press the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next update.